Wow, you OCD is it? A common remark that can be heard often in the classroom when, for example, your classmate points out a small grammatical mistake or rearranges the tables when they are slightly out of line. In a normal setting, people use the term OCD often to describe someone who is very particular with small details, sometimes to the point of being annoying. However, this terminology is very generalized and often doesn't apply to those suffering from OCD. In this video, we are going to explain what causes OCD and what OCD entails, so hopefully we can better understand those affected. OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder and is a mental condition that varies in severity. OCD is the third most common mental disorder in Singapore, according to the Singapore Mental Health Study 2016, with 3.6% of the population being diagnosed with it at the time of the survey. In this study, it was found that the median years for OCD patients in Singapore to seek treatment is 11 years, due to the symptoms being mild initially, which could be viewed as normal. According to Hanupri TV Raj, Senior Clinical Psychologist at the Institute of Mental Health Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, OCD could affect up to 4% of youths here, which is almost double the global prevalence of 2% to 3%. From 2014 to 2018, the IMH Child Guidance Clinic saw an average of about 130 children and adolescents aged between 6 and 18 years old affected by OCD a year. This increased rate of OCD in Singapore can be concerning, so let's take a look at re what risk factors increase the chance of OCD. Even though the exact cause of OCD has not been found, there are three main risk factors that lead to development of OCD. Firstly, the condition is genetic, and studies have shown that people with first-degree relatives, such as parents, siblings, or children, who are affected by OCD have a higher risk of developing OCD. If the relative develops OCD during their teens, the risk of the person themselves developing OCD is increased further. More experimentation and studies are being conducted to explore the connection between genetics and OCD in order to improve OCD diagnosis and treatment. Secondly, the next cause is due to brain structure. Studies have shown that patients with OCD have differences in their frontal cortex and subcortical structures. It has been shown that there is a relationship between abnormalities of certain parts of the brain and symptoms of OCD. However, more research needs to be conducted to clearly show this relationship. This could allow for more effective diagnosis as well as more specialized treatments for OCD. Lastly, the environment also plays a role in the likelihood of developing OCD. Studies have shown that there is a relationship between childhood trauma and obsessive compulsive symptoms, but more research needs to be conducted. In some cases, children may develop OCD or show symptoms due to pandas. No, not those pandas. Pandas refers to pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorders associated with streptococcal infections, where a child develops OCD after a streptococcal infection. Some people have described OCD as having a broken sieve in their thoughts, so some negative thoughts cannot be strained out, leaving them easily overwhelmed. Generally, these symptoms are split into two categories, obsessions and compulsions, and those affected may have either or both. Obsessions refers to the repeated thoughts or mental images that cause anxiety, causing them to be distressed. Common obsessions include a fear of contamination and germs, unwanted taboo thoughts involving sex or religion, as well as aggressive thoughts towards self or others. Another obsession includes symmetry and ordering, where they want things to be organized in a particular way. These can get overwhelming quickly and can disrupt one at school or work. Obsessions are often alleviated by compulsions. Compulsions are repetitive behaviors that those affected by OCD feel the urge to do in response to an obsessive thought to gain relief. Common compulsions include excessive cleaning or hand washing, organizing and arranging things in a particular specific way, repeatedly ensuring they have done a task in order to relieve their anxiety, such as checking to see if the door is locked or the stove is off. Other examples include hoarding certain items relating to obsessions or compulsive counting. But some of these things may just be a regular habit. It's a pretty good habit to check if your stove is off when you leave the house. So how can we differentiate between OCD symptoms and just a normal habit? Well, as a general rule, a person with OCD cannot control their thoughts or behavior, even if they recognize it as excessive and they wish to stop. They usually spend at least one hour a day on these behaviors and don't feel pleasure when performing these rituals, but may feel some relief from their anxiety. Most of the time, their daily life is disrupted due to these thoughts and behaviours, making activities we consider normal and easy significantly harder. 
symptoms may come and go, ease over time, or even worsen. People with OCD may try to help themselves by avoiding situations that trigger their obsessions, or they may use alcohol or drugs to calm themselves down. If serious, an OCD patient may even turn to self-harm or have suicidal thoughts. Although most adults with OCD recognize that what they are doing doesn't make sense, some adults and most children may not realize that their behavior is out of the ordinary. Parents or teachers are typically the ones to recognize these OCD symptoms in children. If you think you have OCD, talk to your doctor about your symptoms. If left untreated, OCD can interfere with all aspects of your life. Obsessive compulsive disorder treatment may not result in a cure, but getting treatment as soon as possible may help prevent OCD from worsening and disrupting more activities in your daily routine. Treatment often involves psychotherapy, medication, or a combination of both. Psychotherapy can be an effective treatment for adults and children with OCD. Among psychotherapy options, certain types of psychotherapy, including cognitive behavior therapy and other related therapies, such as habit reversal training, can be as effective as medication for many individuals. A type of CBT technique called exposure and response prevention, in which patients spend time in the very situation that triggers compulsions, but then are prevented from undertaking the usual resulting compulsion, can be effective in reducing compulsive behaviors in OCD, even in people who did not respond well to medication. Serotonergic antidepressants, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, also known as SSRIs, tend to be the main form of medication for OCD patients. These medications usually take months to start working. However, most patients eventually benefit from them. SSRI improves OCD symptoms by increasing the levels of a chemical called serotonin in your brain. As its name implies, SSRI works by inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter that stabilizes our mood, feelings of well-being, and happiness. It inhibits the reuptake of serotonin from a synaptic cleft back to the presynaptic neuron by blocking the serotonin transporter, therefore increasing serotonin levels in the synaptic cleft. If symptoms do not improve with these types of medications, research shows that some patients may respond well to an antipsychotic medication. Although research shows that an antipsychotic medication may help manage symptoms for people who have both OCD and a tic disorder, Research on the effectiveness of antipsychotics to treat OCD is mixed. Like most mental disorders, treatment is often individualized and might start with either psychotherapy or medication or a combination of both where medication is ineffective. OCD usually begins before the age of 25 years and often in childhood and adolescence. OCD cases appearing after the age of 50 are rare and are often caused by illness and are not psychiatric in nature. There is no sure way of delaying the onset of OCD, but steps can be taken to postpone obsessions and compulsions. The first step to postpone your obsessions is to mentally agree to pay attention to the obsessions, just like making a mental agreement with your fear. Next, choose a specific time in the future when you will return to them. That time in the future is chosen based on your ability. Some can postpone for 90 minutes or more, while others may even consider a 30 second wait to be a challenge. As that time arrives, either start obsessing or consider postponing the worries to another specific time. Whenever possible, choose to postpone. Postponing helps to gradually decrease the response to obsessions instead of attempting to get rid of these thoughts instantly. In the long run, this also allows for more self-control. The same principles apply to postponing compulsions as well. First, mentally agree to pay attention to your ritual. Second, choose a specific time in the future when you will return to it. Third, as that time arrives, either start ritualizing or consider postponing the ritual to another specific time. Whenever possible, choose to postpone. Like anxiety and distress, if you don't act on those urges, urges to ritualize will subside over time. If you succeed in postponing the compulsions for several hours, you might realize that you will not feel so compelled to engage in them when your selected time to ritualize arrives. Knowing how to care for oneself and manage your OCD is important to living a happier life and improving your well-being. OCD can worsen if one feels lonely, so it is important that one receives an adequate amount of support. These could be talking about their troubles with family or friends, or joining OCD support groups to receive practical advice to manage symptoms, while also sharing experiences with others. This may help one to feel less lonely and be better able to cope. Anxiety management techniques such as relaxation training, slow breathing exercises, mindfulness meditation, 
and hyperventilation control can help an OCD sufferer manage their own symptoms.